All right, now why are those values approximate? Because all of this is approximate. Now I know it's because we rounded it, but there's something else going on, which is that the whole thing was built off of midpoints, right? We rounded these values. We never knew what the data were in the first place, but then we rounded them into class midpoints. And by doing that, we basically made it very, very rounded, <laughs> very approximate. So that's what we would say. So because we are using midpoints, right? It would have been rounded to begin with, but then we made it extra rounded <laughs> by using midpoints, right? Um, our values are very approximated. It's kind of like you're doing double rounding, right? I'll just kind of say this right here. Kind of even triple rounding. Um, so you round your results, of course, but you also, you rounded them into the midpoints and then you rounded them extra bits down here when you rounded two decimal places or whatever. So you're you're doing extra amounts of rounding, which makes it extra approximate, if you will. I don't think that's a word, but I'm going with it. Next, interpret the mean and standard deviation in the context of the situation. Well, that's a script that we learned in section 3.2. So you'd have to go back there and grab it, but it's the give or take script. I'll just put it that way. Give or take script that we learned in section 3.2. Okay, so we expect the wait times between eruptions, right? So let's write this. So it starts off, we expect the wait times, or I guess the wait time between um, ran two random eruptions of Old Faithful. Uh, I'm running out of space. <laughs> old Faithful. I'm going to fit it in here. Faithful to be 74.85 minutes. Give or take 14.72 minutes. So just a reminder of the script and how it works. We have our context. We have our standard deviation, right? That's S. We have the context right here. That's the hardest part. You got to figure out a way in English to kind of put what's going on, right? And then you have your mean right here. All right. What else would we, we notice about these, um, this distribution of these times between eruptions to talk about if we were going to discuss this? And one of the other things that's clear is that this is quite skewed left. Um, we have a big peak here at 107 and it would taper off. As a matter of fact, I can show you it's skewed left um, in StatCrunch pretty quickly. So if I do a graph and I could do a histogram but, oh, I can't do a histogram. All right, so remember, I can't do a histogram because these aren't raw data. So I'd have to have a column with all the values in order to do a histogram. Boo. But I can do a bar plot. Treat these, pretend like they're um, qualitative data. So I'm going to do graph bar plot with summary, right? These, when you have a table like this, StatCrunch refers to it, it. We call it a frequency distribution, but StatCrunch calls it a summary. Right? It's the same thing. All right, so we would take the midpoints because it won't, probably, I mean, we could take the time between eruptions, it won't matter. And the frequencies are the counts, that's important. And I want to do it in the worksheet order because I want it to go 40 to 49, then 50 to 59, and so on. I don't want to put it in ascending order or something like that. There you go. So you can see that's skewed left. You have this big peak at the 80 to 89, and then you have a tail kind of going off to the left, with 50 to 59 being a pretty sizable tail. So that's very much skewed left. It's also a little bit bimodal. Um, by meaning two modal mode. There's kind of two big peaks, 80 to 89 and 50 to 59. And those would be things you'd probably discuss if you were going to discuss this. Right? And talk
talk about the average. So we'll mention both things. So one is that the times uh, between eruptions are skewed left, which generally means that the mean is not a very good um, data set. You can also tell, by the way, from looking at the mean and the median. Right? I know I did a graph of it, but look, the mean is significantly smaller than the median, which generally means the median or is the better measure of center, so skewed left. So the mean is um, not a great measure of center. The median is better. Right? We learned that in section 3.1, as a matter of fact. When you have skewed data, the median is the better measure of center. Then you can also discuss, if you wanted to, um, the data set is a little bimodal. Bimodal meaning two peaks, right? So it has two high points, two high frequency zones. 80 to 89, obviously, but 50 to 59 is the other one. And you're probably going to be waiting either between 80 and 89 minutes or 50 and 59 minutes. Those are the most likely wait times. So if you drove up and said, you know, how long am I going to have to wait? They'll say, well, just a little under an hour or an hour <laughs> and a half, right? Most likely wait times. The mean and the median maybe not be as useful for something like this. At this point, I'm going to double back and actually show how to use the TI-84 to find the mean, median, standard deviation, and variance. So if you're not using the TI-84, you just skip ahead to the next video. OK, so I went to Stat, Edit, and I typed in the two columns of data, the midpoints and the frequencies. Then I go to Stat, Calculate, one variable. Again, this is grouped binned data, so you have to use L2, so second two in order to get L2 as your frequency list. So L1 is the midpoints, L2 is the frequencies, and then you go to calculate. The mean is right there at 74.85. The standard deviation is 7 or 14.72, right there, 7159. The median is down here at 85. Now the bad part is that the variance is not found. So to find the variance, you're actually going to have to take the 14.71598, so 14.716, and you square it to get the variance. So you'll have to do that yourself because the TI-84 does not give the variance on its own.